But then our story takes another turn as we go back to 2 Samuel 12. Look at verse 13. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned greatly against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because you did this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. Just as you imagine Bathsheba here on her knees, crying out for justice, I want you to picture David over here on his knees, begging God for mercy and forgiveness. And we actually had this. Psalm 51 is a psalm written by David about this very situation. It is his repentance for what he did with and to Bathsheba. Listen to what David says. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done evil. What is evil in your sight? So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Skip in a couple lines. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God my Savior. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. What should God's response be to David? Should God forgive him? Can God forgive him and still provide justice for Bathsheba? Can God forgive him and still remain God? Justice is not something that imposes itself upon God. Justice, our entire concept of justice, is part of God's nature. It's not that God would be unjust. It's that God would not be God because God is unjust. I mean, because God is just, and being just would be not God. Our sin cuts to the very nature of God. Forgiveness of sin is not an easy thing for God to do. In fact, it's the hardest and greatest thing God has ever done. Now, I want you to imagine God walking over to David, putting his huge God hand on David's shoulder. David shudders. I imagine God saying something like, David, you have sinned. And the wages of sin is death. Justice demands it. Righteousness requires it. Not only must you die, but as the defender and protector of the weak, I must kill you. I must do this for righteousness and holiness is who I am. But then God pauses and leans real close, whispering. You don't know this yet, but my son is coming. He's coming to die for you and to die because of you. And if you unite with him in his death, you will die. You will die to your sins and your trespasses and your transgressions. 
So that having died with my son, your sin will be taken away. And there is a day coming when I will raise the dead in him back to life as new creatures. You can live forever with me, not as the vile murderer and sexually immoral David, but as a new creation transformed into the image of my son, so that it is not you who lives, but as Christ who lives in you. Although David's sin led to his spiritual death, sin leads to death. The wages of sin is death. But through Christ, He could be resurrected eventually as a new creature in the image of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Our sin leads to our death. Now, we have this choice to die because of our sin and stay dead. That's hell, eternal separation from God. Or we can choose to die willingly with Christ, have our flesh and our self killed so that when we do die, we can be united with Christ. We can be resurrected with Christ as well. You won't get away from dying from your sin. The question is what happens next. Whether or not you'll be eternally damned in hell separated from God forever, or able to be resurrected as a new created creature in Christ Jesus. As I was working through this, I realized, I mean, you can see both of you, well, let's see, you can see yourself in both of these people. There are times where stuff happens to us. Where this world is wrong. And we're on our knees crying out for a God to defend us, to protect us, to save us, to be our refuge, our stronghold, our shelter. But as a middle class white suburban American college educated male that's not the majority of my story the majority of my story is over here with David where I am the one who has sinned and I need a God to redeem me to restore me to recreate me to save me not from the world, but to save me from myself. And the greatest thing is our God through the cross is the protector and defender of the weak but also the Redeemer and Savior of the wicked. And somehow, and it blows my mind, that in the cross, both things are possible and true. And it's God's ultimate statement that I will do 
both protect the weak and redeem the wicked, for he is God. And that is awesome.